Our reading this evening comes to us from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. I am reading from the Inclusive Bible. For the message of the cross is complete absurdity to those who are headed for ruin. But to us who are experiencing salvation, it is the power of God. Scripture says, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and thwart the learning of the learned. Where are the wise? Where are the scholars? Where are the philosophers of this age? Has not God turned the wisdom of this world to folly? If it was God's wisdom that the world in its wisdom would not know God, it was because God wanted to save those who have faith through the foolishness of the message we preach. For while the Jews call for miracles and the Greeks look for wisdom, here we are preaching a Messiah nailed to a cross. To the Jews, this is an obstacle that they cannot get over. And to the Greeks, it is madness. But to those who have been called, whether they are Jews or Greeks, Christ is the power and wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Siblings in Christ, I'll be the first to admit that this text makes no sense. None at all. Especially in a society and world in which we strive for higher education. We must know more. We are pushed into trade schools, pushed into college. We want to be the one holding on to the knowledge. That was an unintentional rhyme. But this text isn't supposed to make sense. That's the point. And that is what we have, should have come to expect from God by now, right? The word incarnate enters the scene, and the entire world is flipped on its head. Nothing is as we expect. Our assumptions are now wrong. The world is all topsy-turvy, a ball of wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey stuff. And in the midst of all the chaos, God continues to bring order and acts. The Greeks of the time thought that Paul and the rest of the disciples spreading the gospel were entirely insane. Who, in their right mind, would believe that a person executed by the state in the most humiliating manner possible was their savior, the salvation of all of creation? You see, the cross was saved for the worst of the worst. It was a tool of agony and humiliation and torture. To think that the savior of the world was executed in such a manner, offered a drink from the sponge and of the liquid that people used to wipe themselves after using the bathroom, likely spat on and had things thrown at him. This, this wrecked body, this man, is our salvation? It's preposterous. Or is it? How many times in your life have you said or had someone say to you, God works in mysterious ways? How many times has something happened to you or around you and you've just stopped and marveled and thought to yourself, that was a God moment. While I adamantly do not believe that everything happens for a reason, I do believe that God can act through all that happens. Siblings, my path in life has been anything but straight, anything but easy. I feel the reason I am here in this place, in this congregation, was a God moment. From the time I heard we were going to have to leave, to the time Marcus and I had a conversation, to the call process, it felt like a God moment to me. I've suffered. 
My family has suffered. I've seen suffering around me. I relate well to Christ on the cross, and I am comforted that my God knows suffering, has suffered, and died as I have and will, and was raised again to show me love and hope. For some, though, this image is downright madness. For those, they cannot understand how or why a god would or could suffer and die. How or why a god would allow suffering if that, was, if that god was a good god. And while I can't answer those questions, because I don't know, the smidgen that I do know and understand about the way God works is this. Expect the unexpected, which, can you really expect the unexpected? Not really. You're just counting on being thrown off course, right? Just a little bit. You might see God in church. The pastors and ministers would be really glad if you see God in church. But, I believe that you're more likely to see God on the street corner handing out jackets and blankets to the homeless on freezing nights, or dropping off cards and meals for the homebound, or telling their guardian and friends what they learned about Jesus in chapel today. In a world where power and wealth, strength and wisdom rule the day, it is really a wonder that the creator of platypus, platypi, and mosquitoes, of grass and trees, of silence, and music, the down and dirty artist whose main medium is the dust of the stars, joined us in our mud and muck and chose to suffer and die as one. Well for us, to show us what love looks like. Godly weakness is Jesus on the cross. And godly foolishness is that death does not have the final word. A love without end. Amen. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not
Christ 